leaving somebody out. I, in my comments earlier, I forgot to thank uh, this great choir director and our music team and our yeah. choir for their service. Last Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Thank you so much for the awesome job that you do. Would you stand? If you have your program still in front of you, we'll go back to read this text again. I want you to know that these are stunning words, shocking and tragic words. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. You may be seen. Those stunning words. This, this is a tough text to preach. But at some point, every preacher or pastor, I think, either does or should preach this text. For a topic, authentic or artificial faith. And my subtopic is, are you sure or assuming a place in heaven? Are you sure? Are you just assuming that you're going to have a place in heaven? Listen, on the day of judgment, only our relationship with Jesus and our obedience to him will matter. <laughs> Many people think that if they good, are good, they say religious things, and they will be rewarded with the eternity in heaven. <clears throat> but I want you to know that Jesus is more concerned with our walk than our talk. Many people proclaim faith in Jesus Christ, but and many attend church, they do good deeds in order to earn God's approval. Mm -hmm. Yet they are not truly saved. But rather they are trying to pay for their ticket to heaven. Mm -hmm. The hard hitting question to consider today is do they, do we, or do you really know him or only know of him? Text tells us that many only know of him. They have never truly met him in a real and personal way. The evidence of faith in Jesus Christ is a personal willingness to surrender our lives completely into God's hands. Mm -hmm. Trusting in his grace alone. This willingness is demonstrated through one's full obedience to God's will. That's the real test of our faith. It's not found in the words that we say, but how we live our lives. We can learn religious vocabulary, memorize Bible verses, Religious songs and, and yet not obey God's will. When a person is truly born again, he or she uh, has the spirit of God living within them. And that spirit enables them to know and to do God's will. There are many people who are getting, who are serving well with the idea that their religious works will save them. The idea of earning a ticket to heaven. But worship is not a ticket-punching process that gets us into heaven when we die. 
Words are not a substitute for obedience. Neither are religious works. The true test of faith is a willingness to follow and serve God. The sad fact of the matter is that according to Jesus, many people sitting in our pews believing that they are saved but are not. Amen. That's what the text says. Amen. That's a sad fact. Many attend church to get God's favor, to, to earn points. Like, that's all that's required. Confessing Jesus and the Lord with a sincere and genuine faith that is authentic. Many people in church and they have a weak, shallow, superficial, emotionalized understanding of the gospel. Many want religion, want to be religious without the relationship. Think about it. think about a person that has their name on the church rolls, been baptized, ten church. Have, may even have a leadership position in church, faithfully tied, uh, invite, invite their family and other friends and stuff to church. They have done many wonderful things for the church. But on Judgment Day, the Lord tells them, I never knew you. <laughs> Depart from me. Let's not say this, this is a shocking test. This is one of the most shocking tests, I think, in the entire Bible. Because we are not saved by works. We're saved by grace, Ephesians 2 and 8. Many are killing, many people today, time are killing themselves trying to live without God. Many people think that they can find peace of mind in pills. That they can eat their way to ecstasy, mm -hmm. drink their way to pleasure, smoke their way to settle their nerves, pump their way to popularity, push their way to power, and bully their way to friendship, and work their way to heaven. But I came this morning uh, to preach about where and how a person can get eternal life. Amen. Amen. To tell you where a sick person can get well. Mm -hmm. Where an ignorant person can become wise. Well, right. Where a bad person become, can be made good and a good person can be made better. Mm -hmm. And even where a dead person can be brought back to life. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Uh, th th this is a soul searching scripture that calls us to examine ourselves. The most important thing that we can do is to teach and preach Jesus. Yes. He is our ultimate example. To tell people there's a heaven and there's a hell. Look, you're going to spend eternity in one or the other. Right. Come on. We have to tell people there's a way to heaven guaranteed. And there's a way to avoid hell. This is the most important message that any one of us can either give or hear. The biblical description of hell makes this pretty obvious. It's described as a place of relentless accusing conscience. Mm -hmm. Unrelieved guilt, remorse, sorrow, regret, isolation, agony, suffering, and punishment. Described as fire, darkness, and the gashing of teeth, weeping, and wailing forever. On the other hand, the biblical description of heaven is stunningly attractive. Unending and unlimited joy, bliss, happiness, satisfaction, no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, no loss, and no remorse. Sheer joy forever. So it should be pretty obvious that heaven is the place where we should want to be. The most important choice that anyone makes, like my brother Leon 
Very few weeks ago, it's the choice of heaven. It's sad to say that there are many, 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 I don't know how exactly how many, many years this is alive. Who think they have made that choice. But they have not. This, this is, this is, this is, uh, help me, Lord. They think that they are set to avoid heaven, at hell as they enter into heaven, but they are mistaken. You know, I was, I was working on this, I, I was thinking to myself, <laughs> does God judge on the curve? <laughs> 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 Professor, I, because Jesus said there will not just be just a few, but many who are mistaken about their future destiny. Jesus shows us here the foolishness of empty words and the tragedy of empty hearts. Empty words coming out of empty hearts. Is there, let me ask, is there a more serious text of scripture than this one? I don't know. There are people who reject Jesus Christ and they are headed to hell. Yes. But, 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 but it's far more serious and sobering, stunning and shocking thing to realize that there are many who are going to say, Lord, Lord, to Jesus Christ. They'll confess some connection to Jesus. They have actually made function in his name only to hear that they will not be entering heaven. Mm -hmm. Our final destination is not determined by what we say. It's determined by our obedience. That's what the text says. Mm -hmm. now, 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 verbal confession is a good thing and it's also necessary. Romans 10, 9 through 10, confess my sins and believe in the heart to God and raise him from the dead. It's also the work of the Holy Spirit because 1 Corinthians 12 and 3 says, we read that no one can make this confession apart from the Holy Spirit. Listen, we had talked about this in the Bible, Bible study. Listen, 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 listen. If you just got head knowledge, uh, uh, intellectual knowledge, uh, 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 but un until you have the Holy Spirit working in and through you, you, you don't have much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we talk all the time. People say, I, I, "I just can't do that." I, I, you know, I just can't do that. You can't. You, no, you can't by yourself. You can't really love people without the Holy Spirit. You can't. Stop saying nasty stuff out your mouth. You, 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 you don't know how to really love and treat people. You, you don't really know how to demonstrate a Christian behavior without the Holy Spirit. You memorize that whole Bible. You still be the biggest sinner in the world. Look, salvation doesn't come by us. It's God's gift to us. Doesn't come through our efforts and we cannot earn it. Text, let me run through these three verses real quick here. In our text, in verse 21, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me. Now, now listen, there's nothing wrong in that confession in the text. It's, it's correct to say, Lord. And to say, Lord, Lord, uh, that's that, that, that affirms a certain level of devotion. Come on, Reverend. You know, Lord is respectful. Yes, sir. But to say, Lord, Lord, that's, that's awesome. And so here you have what is correct, is true, and to some degree is said with eagerness and, and passionate. It shows some strength of devotion. Lord, Lord. But Jesus, listen, Jesus is not talking to marginal folk here. He's not talking to people on the edge. He's not talking to sinners. He's not talking to the world. Three times in verse 22 is devotion, open confession, passion, and zeal backing up these people's confession. Who are these people? 
These are serious church folk. That's who these are. These Christians. They are among the righteous miracle workers. These folk do great things. I mean, some of them can cast out devils and uh, ministry. They, they, they assume that they know we're known by God. They, they did wonderful works. They were, were ministers, preachers, teachers. Uh, uh, they, they preached in the name of Jesus. They, these, these people, but they weren't, they're superficial. These are not unimportant people making this claim. Lord, Lord. They, these, these folks, how up in the church? How stunning is it then to hear in verse 22 many saying that and then in verse 23, the response the Lord declared to them, I never knew you. They claim him, but he doesn't claim them. Why? Because salvation doesn't come to those who only profess it. Say that. <laughs> those who only speak it. It's not the sayers that are saved. Lord have mercy. It's those who listen and are obedient. Those who have truly surrendered. And if we look a little closer into verse 23, we can see that these people are not known to the Lord because they are doers of lawlessness. In other words, they, 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 they do what they want to do. That's, that, they, they, they don't do what God does. Jesus said, watch for me. Those professing Christ and living a worldly life will be exposed at some point as hypocrites. Listen, profession is valueless if it stands alone. In fact, it's, it's like we're taking the Lord's name in vain. <coughs> to profess, to be his and not be his, to not have any relationship with him, is, it's like blasphemy. To use God's name that way. Without any real commitment. Our obligation, Jesus says, but him that doeth the will of my Father. Claiming to belong to the Lord, to represent the Lord, to speak for the Lord, to do ministry for the Lord, while having no relationship to him. But living a sinful, self-indulgent life, it's vulgar. The world is full of people who call Jesus Lord. You say it with emotion and passion. Lord, Lord, and yet never ever do they turn from their sins and submit to his lordship. Amen. That is why we are told in 2 Corinthians 13, if I examine yourselves whether to see if you are in the faith. We are to look at the character of our lives. We are made acceptable to God through a pattern of obedience to his word. Faith without works is what? Yeah. It's dead. Reverend preached on that the other night. I, I, for, for God to say, I mean, think how disappointed could that be. For God to say to you on that day, I, I, I never know. <clears throat> that doesn't mean he doesn't know who you are. When Jesus says, I, I never knew you means you're a stranger to me. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Woo! You, 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 you are, you are, uh, your imitation. It means I have no intimate relationship with you. They had no relationship with Christ because they never came through the narrow gate. Verse 13, Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate, for the wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to the Many are those who enter by it. For the gate is small, it's, it's narrow, it leads to life, and few there are that find it. Whoa, 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 few that actually are going to enter into heaven. They didn't come by the narrow gate with an attitude of repentance. They gave a testimony, but it wasn't real. 
But their testimonies were only empty words. Show me your life. Verse 18 in that text says, A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know by their fruits. Look at your life. The reality is, if we have a real faith in Christ, that real faith will bear fruit. Amen. Jeff O'Hara wrote, Why call me Lord? Lord, and do not the things I say. You call me the way and walk me not. You call me the life and live me not. You call me master and obey me not. So if I can give, you blame me not. You call me bread and eat me not. You call me truth and believe me not. You call me Lord and serve me not. So if I can give you, blame me not for your empty words. Verse 24 demonstrates the real condition of the heart. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, the contrast here is between two gates, two ways, two crowds, and two destinies. Two trees, now two houses, both subjected to the same judgment. The contrast here is between people who hear the word of God and act upon it, and those who do not. This is about a contrast between the obedient and the disobedient. Jesus is addressing those who profess to know God. This is the Lord crowd. The ones who have given their life over to doing things in ministry office. But this group is still divided into two different groups. That's, that's what we have in the church. Those who really obey and those who do not obey. That's, this, this, this is hard and I know this is tough. But verse 24 says, those who hear these words of mine and act upon them. And in verse 26, those who hear these words of mine and do not act upon them. So you got false and true believers in the church. Both, just like building a house, they're spec houses. So they, they both appear the same. Each one of us is a house. Uh, 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 the only difference in the building of the two houses is what we see. You see, the difference is the part that we cannot see. It's not the roof, it's not the sidewalls, it's not the windows, it's not the doors, it's the foundation. Yes, it is. All right. This is to say that we're talking to people who belong to the visible church. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people who know some scripture, mm -hmm. attend church, they listen to preaching, and even involved in church. They look like true Christians, but their foundation is not visible. They've heard the teaching of Christ, but who is living the life genuinely? Who? Who? Now, the Jesus says here that there's no way to tell the truth, the truth from the false, until the storm comes. Yeah. Jesus said, in church, we, we, we can't, we're not supposed to judge each other, but we can't tell who's real and who's not real. Built the same, the only difference is the foundation. We can't see the foundation. He said, until the storm comes. You see, the storm will manifest the truth. Then we'll find out who's built like a wise person or who's built like a fool. Look, let, let, let's look at the seminaries here just, just for a second here. They both build a house. A house represents our religious lives, our religious activity. Life within the framework of Christianity. True believers and false believers side by side. So similar, these houses that it's hard for us to tell who's who. They both build a house. They actually build it the same way. It looks the same. It's a track house. It looks like all the other Christian houses 
from the outside. The only difference is the foundation. Only the Lord can know that until the judgment day comes. Man, woman, child is a fool to build on sand. Because when the storm comes, it will wash the house away. So if we put all our everything into the world, into our money, or to in our possessions, or in our achievements, or accomplishments, whatever it is, it's built on sand. It means to have no regard for the word of God in terms of obedience. No integrity in the behavior for the love of the law of God. They worship with their mouths, but not their hearts. There is a foundation. A life of obedience manifests true salvation, church. The difference between a true believer and a false is the pattern of loving, eager submissiveness, obedience to the word of God. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. <clears throat> Hearing the word and doing it is the only genuine, authentic, validated, validated of a true salvation. If we say, Lord, Lord, Master, then immediately we should say, I'm your slave. All right. If he's our master, we should submit. And if we don't, it's pornography. It's blasphemy. It's vulgar. None of us are perfectly obedient, but we are imperfectly obedient. But we, the real people, long to be perfectly obedient. That's our passion. That's our hearts. True Christians build their lives on obedience to God's word. Unfortunately, this time in our society seems like too often we aid and abet the fools by making everything quick and easy. Quick and easy evangelism. Quick and easy gospel presentation. Keep it moving. No time for real soul conviction. So much superficiality and shallowness in the name of Jesus. That is an accepted as being legitimate. No, no deep plowing, no hard work in the soul, no brokenness of heart, no grief over sin, no lack of death. We lack sincerity, too much is superficial. But those that are real are not looking for a fast track. Come on. In fact, strangely but true, there are many people who confess Jesus Lord and don't think that that means that he's in charge. It's laughable. We have to preach against sin. We have to expose two losses. We understand that the Lord, what he is asking us, he's asking for our lives. To deny ourselves. Mm -hmm. To take up our crosses. Yes. And follow him. Yes. Well, this text is Stunning. It's it's scary. But it's very it's very serious. I, you ever think about some people's funeral that are preached and it's, and, it's, and it's preached as if we know for sure that the person is going to heaven, That's right. but we don't know for real. But we will know one day. It's, it's, it's not enough to just play church. It's not, not enough to just act like you're trying to do right. It's not enough just to look right. It's not enough to just play the part. It's, it's not enough. It has to be personal. It has to be a, 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 a life that lives in and through you in the name of Jesus. What a shock to think that you're on your way to heaven Mm. Only to find out that you're headed to hell. Mm. Many have a weak, 
shallow, superficial, trivialized, emotional approach to Christianity, unfortunately. Too, so, too often it seems to be an overwhelming desire in church, even with us preachers, to make everybody feel good. And to assure them that they're okay with God. Yeah. Some people who talk about Jesus, you know, they, 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 they encourage people, lure people, and, and make them think that they're, they're, they're you're okay. But when, when they're not, you're not okay. If you're not in relationship, if you're not in obedience to the word of God, and then there's a thing of a failure of self-examination. We are we sure or assuming that we have a place in heaven? Listen, creating Christian literature, feeling spiritual, coming to church can lead people into the deception that that's equal to being saved. You ever heard? People say, well, that was basically a good person. Surely God won't keep me out of here. After all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 that, that's not great on the, on, on the curve. <laughs> Some people are only interested in the benefits of being a Christian. Amen. Give me a blessing. Give me a spiritual experience. Give me a spiritual high. Good feelings. Healing and prosperity, but you know this this, this ain't the kind of sermon uh, uh, you want to preach because this this is this is real this digs deep. But we don't want nobody to end up in hell because in unregenerate people, no matter how well they're educated or theologically trained, they can't get it right. Because too often we want painless Pentecost. Something that fits our schedule. God's problem isn't the world. It's disobedient, bankrupt, worldly Christians. Well, I want you to know that heaven is available. Be sure. Jesus came down to 42 generations. Taught and showed every example in the Bible. I love, I lo what I love so much, one thing that I love so much about Jesus is that whatever he said, he demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do. I want to try to demonstrate some love and some compassion, some concern. I, I, I really do, some care. What, what good is it? You, yeah, I, I love that song that says, I give myself away. What well, that, that there's a book that says, The Day I Gave Myself Away. To give ourselves to be a follower of Jesus, we have to have an intimate personal relationship with him. Amen. One Friday, Jesus died. He was buried in the bar too. They nailed him to an old rugged cross. They beat him. They insulted him. They did every imaginable thing. Come, come down, Jesus, and save yourself. But Jesus knew it was better to come up out of a grave than to come down from the cross. He stayed there all like Friday and all day Saturday, Saturday night, but early Sunday morning, he got up. And because he get, got up, we, we can get up out of our selfishness, out of our phoniness. We can come real. I pray that we all have and continue to cultivate and develop a rich, real, relationship with Jesus. That, that's the answer. And this it's by following what's in his book. It's always there. It's, there's no secret. In 
Jesus' name. Give myself away. 